Today, we're gonna to show you a game we call ABC Slam Dunk. It's a beanbag toss game that gives your kids an opportunity to work on some of those early literacy skills. So, let's get started. All right, guys, so we got some beanbags, we got some letters, and we have some words, and we're gonna play a few games. You guys ready to play? Yeah. All right, come on. Attach your letter or word cards to some bins, and then you call out a word or the letter, and then you give the kids a chance to throw the beanbags to the corresponding bin. Here. Oh, that's, bro, that's pretty good. <laughs> An example of how that might work is to say, hey, Lennon, take the red beanbag and throw it in the bin that has the L on it. So that gives her an opportunity to work on primary colors as well as working on the letter recognition. Now we have our letter cards, we have our word cards, we have our sealable plastic bags, we have a bowl of beans, we have a pair of scissors, we have some tape, and we have several little felt patches. Oh, and we have some glue. So, now we're gonna put all those things together to make our bean bags. So we're gonna start off by taking this bigger plastic bag and turning it into a smaller bag for the bean bags. Make the second cut. Now I'm gonna make a small bag of the Ziploc bag. I'll take my tape. Right there. Then I'm gonna fold it over to make an edge. Take another strip here. Didn't have too much, just cut the ends off. Now I have an itty bitty bag for my itty bitty beans. Load these up. This actually might be fun for the kids to help you out with too. Now you take the bean bag and you place it over here in the center of your felt. Line that felt with glue. You can use a hot glue or a super glue or pretty much whatever you have around the house that'll work on fabric. You'll take your matching felt and you'll press it around the edges. Just be sure to allow this glue or any other glue to dry before you try to use the bags. In the end, your bean bag will look like this and you're ready to go. The cool part about these bean bags is that once you make them, you have them and you can use them for other activities as well. So you pick a letter, which, le which letter are you gonna pick? D. B, all right, let's give it a toss. Let's see if she gets it. Let's see if she gets it. <gasps> oh, okay, 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 okay. All right, Lennon, it's your turn. It's like your turn, all right. What, what letter are you gonna try to toss yours into? She can get it. Yeah! Girl, good job, all right. Okay, okay, I'll go right one more time. You hit it, you, you hit this. I know you can do it. After the kids get used to the letters and words on the bins, then you can sort of step it up a notch. You can start keeping score, or you can even have them step back a little bit further, see if you can get them more engaged, more excited. All right, cool, when I count to three, we're gonna jump right over into our spots. Okay, ready? One, two, three, let's get it. All right, okay, all right. Here's what we're gonna do, guys. You guys get to pick whichever bin you wanna throw it in. Lennon, since you're the youngest, you go ahead and pick which one you wanna try to toss it in. Get that in. Oh, it's okay. Okay, give it a shot again. Give it another shot. Oh, that's a good shot. Hey, Island, now which one do you want to try? You know what? Try, try the, try for the L. Hit that, hit that L for your sister. Hit that L for Lennon. Oh, it's pretty close. Right. Keep going. Shoot, shoot the bag over. Let's see, see if we hit that L one. Yeah, there you go. Right, good job. Good job. Let me see your celebration dance. Now hit it. Dance, not sing. There you go, good job. Let me see your celebration dance. <laughs> we're having a lot of fun, but we're also exercising some letter recognition and some word recognition as well. Yeah. So I changed up the letters, and now they are words. here. They're words, Ben. <laughs> Match it up. There you go, purple bag, purple linen. But we also got an opportunity to really work on some hand-eye coordination, which really went a long way, especially with Lennon, who was doing a great job, uh, really helped build her confidence. Yeah, yeah, it's good. You always cheer for yourself. It's a good thing. All right, what, all right Isla, what, what are you shooting for right now? Uh, school. School, okay, all right. Oh, it's okay, here we go. Linen. Nice, good job. You can do it. Yeah, on the first shot, at a girl, nice. At a girl, oh nice, look at that, have a celebration, it's time to celebrate. There you go. <laughs> wow, wow, okay. 
So then the big bad wolf went to the second little pig's house and he knocked on the front door and he said, Little pig, little pig, let me in. Not by the hair on our chinny chin chins, said the little pigs. Reading to your kids is one of the most important things you can do to help develop their language skills. But we all know how hard it can be to get them to focus. In this video, I'll show you how to boost their attention and get them really excited about reading. <laughs> when I read to my kid, I try to have as much fun as I can with the story. When they see that I enjoy it, they enjoy it too. Yes! So the big bad wolf, who by now was absolutely famished and terribly cranky, came to the third little pig's house and knocked on the door. Do you know what it means to be famished? No. It means you're so hungry. So hungry. You could just eat somebody up. To get my kids to really enjoy and focus on the story, I like to use different voices for each of the characters. So, if I'm reading The Three Little Pigs, for the big bad wolf, it's low and growly, but not too scary. And for the pigs, it's high and silly. He said, little pig, little pig, let me in. And what did the pig say? Not by your my chin chin chin. <laughs> not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. I also throw in a little drama when I read. If I read like this, and I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in, my kids would lose interest. But when I'm a little more dramatic, my kids really get pulled into the story. I need to find another way in, said the big bad wolf. What do you think he thought he was gonna do? Go down the chimney. I know, I'll climb down the chimney. Is his name Santa Claus? No. No, what's he doing? Climbing down the chimney and he'll die cause there's fire. Oh my gosh, the third little pig jumped up quick, he said. We must build a fire in the fireplace. The wolf slid down the chimney and burned his bottom so badly that he howled in pain. Oh, oh. Can you make that noise? <laughs> Never to bother the three little pigs again. So the next time you read to your kids, try using different voices for each of the characters and be dramatic. When you have fun reading, your kids will too. I love you. Thanks for reading it to me. You did a great job. <laughs> Send us pictures or videos of you and your family during story time. Just hashtag them with Mother Goose Club or tag us here on YouTube. And tune into our YouTube channels to find more great videos for you and your kids. We would love to hear from you. So type in comments below and don't forget to subscribe. Reading to your kids is one of the most important things you can do to boost your kids. <laughs> I think he did. <laughs>Talking about the book cover, for instance, is one of them. Here, I'll show you how. <laughs> All you gotta do is ask a few questions about the cover and describe some of the things you may have noticed. And before you know it, your kids will be so excited to read and so much better at critical thinking. Check it out. All right, so what do you guys think this story's about? About two fish, one's, one's Alone and one's happy. One's alone and one's happy. What about you, Zan? What do you think the story's about? Mm, somebody's trying to get fishes. Somebody's trying to get fishes. Learning to predict what will happen is such a huge reading skill. Even asking the simplest questions about the character and the mood will help your kids develop that skill. Who do you think caught him? 
A boy. A boy. So you think it's gonna be a happy story or a sad story? Happy. Happy, yeah. What makes it, what's gonna make it a happy story? He's happy. He's happy, even though he's in the net? Mm -hmm. Okay, what do you think, Zion? Maybe he's in the water playing? Yeah, maybe he's in the water playing. Yeah, that's good. Before we read any book now, we talk about the author and the illustrator. It's such a great way to show the kids that books come from people's ideas and their work. This book's called Hot Dog Car. Do you see the hot dog on there? Um, the hot dog and he made some wheels and he made some glass. Yeah, so this story is by Louise Patel and it's illustrated by Patsy Chen. Is he clapping his hands in the car? He might be, but well, probably not. He's driving, so he's steering the hot dog wheel. So, oh. so um, what does an illustrator do? Um, do you know? Draws the pictures? Yeah, the illustrator draws all the pictures and they color the pictures. That way it's really exciting to read. Do you think they use, the illustrator used crayons, markers, nah, brushes? Crayons. crayons, what do you think? I think um, brush. brushes. like paint I, brushes? I think, paint I brushes. think, I also think um, Sharpie. Sharpie? Sharpie, possible. Maybe Sharpie. a thin Sharpie, Sharpie. like Sharpie. around the hot dog Sharpie. part, yeah. but these are really cool, bright colors. Yeah, we're gonna read it together. When we talk about authors and illustrators, my kids see that they can also write and illustrate too. It's amazing how such a simple conversation may inspire them to make their own books. The great thing about book covers is you can talk about anything. When Zion only knew a few words, I'd ask him about colors, shapes, and basic objects. And while we did that, he worked on his vocabulary. You can mix it up and ask different questions depending on your child's age and their interests. Just make it fun. These are really like bright colors, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there's blue. a little bit of dark, you see? Yeah, it's got some dark blue in there, some aqua. It's like the ocean. Blue, Remember the ocean? Blue, orange, gray, green. What's gray? The net. The net's gray. That's good. You see some shapes in here? Oh, yes. A circle. A the, yeah, the O inside. looks like O, right. A tiny bitty circle. Yeah, it was like little circles for the eyes. Diamond and square. Yeah, and diamond square. and square. That's, I didn't even a see that. That's good. A long rectangle. A long, that's right. A long rectangle. And there you go, book covers. A great chance to get your kids excited about reading, writing, and illustrating. So make sure you take a picture or a video of you talking book covers with your kids and hashtag it Mother Goose Club. We love when you subscribe and when you comment. So show us the love and catch more tips and activities on other Show Me How videos. And hey, keep rocking that reading time. Catch you later. Three, two, one. Right on. This is a great way for something cause, there, <laughs> and when. <laughs> they can illustrate and, t oh. they can tell, ah. Oh. <laughs> Reading books is, oh, that's not even the line. That's not what you told me to say. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute, that's wrong. Here, I'll show you. I'll show you how. I'll show you how. Uh, you can, ah, oh, that confused me more. <laughs> this is a dad with three kids right here. After a while, I was like, dude, get off me. <laughs> we got this. Sorry, tons to talk about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so many other. <sighs> All right, here we go. This is it, this is it. Or a video of you talking. Ah! So keep rocking that reading time. <laughs>
Now you can use a container, a gift bag, a paper bag, or a pillowcase. Then, we pull one thing out at a time and see how many words we can find that rhyme with that one thing. So for this, we take turns. I'd take out a sock, and then she would say, rock. Then I'd say, clock. Then she might say, block. And you go on as long as you can. Take a look. Okay, Olivia, I have a sock. What rhymes a sock? Block. Good. Mm, lock. Talk. Mock. Rock. Good. <laughs> Rhyming teaches a skill called phonemic awareness. That's when kids can tell that words are made of sounds. It may seem simple, but it is so important for growing brains to practice phonemic awareness. You and your kids can rhyme all day long. When you're tying your child's shoe, you could say, hey, what rhymes with shoe or lace? Or when you're making breakfast, you could say, what rhymes with egg or juice? Sometimes I'll be silly and say, let's leave the house, mouse, or get in the car, star. Hat. Mat. Cat. Cat in the hat. <laughs> Ring. Bling. Sing. King. King. <laughs> Rhyming is a simple and easy way to learn the sounds of language. And best of all, you don't even have to use real words. The important thing is to play with sounds and have fun. Star. Nar. Car. Wars. Yes, love it. What rhymes with bug? Hug. Whoop! <laughs> So get out there and start rhyming. You can't go wrong. The sillier, the better. Help us and other Mother Goose Club families learn by sharing your rhyme ideas and activities. Just hashtag pictures and videos, Mother Goose Club, or comment below. Don't forget to subscribe to be the first to know about new videos. See you later, alligator. After a while, crocodile. Rhyming teaches phonemic awareness. Practice phonemic awareness. <laughs> phonemic awareness. Doc? Tick. <laughs> it's a phenomenon that I can't say phonemic awareness. So Don't touch the microphone with a star, okay? I put a lot. Better hey, readers. You can't pick your nose, sweet girl. <laughs> help us and other Mother Goose Club. And help us and other Mother Goose Club. And other Mother Goose Club families. Oh my gosh, y'all. Rope? Lasso. <laughs> <laughs> when you're tying your child's shoe, child's shoe. What rhymes with tickle? <laughs> tickle, pickle. <laughs>